I'm Robert Scoble and we're here at Blog World Expo in the Rackspace booth. And I'm here with one of my favorite bloggers, Chris Brogan. He's a famous blogger, bigger than me, I think, a lot of times. And we're going to talk about what's, what it takes to feed the beast, keep these media businesses and uh, what we do running. Who are you? I'm Chris Brogan, president of Human Business Works. And it's a company that does uh, strategic advisory, mostly mid to large size companies. The way I've been looking at it lately, I'm the architect who takes all this junk and puts it into something bigger because I think what's happened lately, Robert, is I think people have all bought some piece of the puzzle and they've said, oh, we've done this because someone told us to do it. And yeah. now they're coming back and they're saying, but it still just doesn't feel like a whole thing. It, it feels like, you know, in the old days, the stereo component systems, well, I bought an equalizer and I bought a woofer, but I'm still not, it doesn't sound like my friends. And I think that's really kind of the opportunity right now. And yeah. so I've been trying to take my folksy, gee whiz, anybody can do it story uh, writ large now in the enterprise space because I, I think they're still not believing that. I still think they're waiting just any day now, Oracle is going to give me the whole suite that I need and I'm not going to have to buy Buddy or Hootsuite or whatever. Yeah. Meanwhile, as we're seeing Salesforce comes and sucks in Buddy, uh, which looks strange for a moment, and then you look and they have Radian, they have Buddy, they're starting to own a good chunk of the enterprise version of social media technology and, and yeah. digital business technology. Well, we talk to the Salesforce guys all the time. That we, we do Gilmore Gang on Friday afternoons right. with two Salesforce guys and a Rackspace guy, and uh, they're very clearly going after Facebook for at work, you know, with chatter, with, uh, with all these tools. Right. So they're, they're, you know, Benioff talks about this, the social enterprise, and he's a big believer in it and pushing it. Not everybody's there though, I, you know. You're, you've turned for almost wholly toward the enterprise, haven't you, or with your blog, or what do you do? I mean, yeah, I know, it's, it's a tricky thing to answer. I, I don't think I do a great job of explaining it, to be honest. I think, so my background before all this was in data centers and all that. A long time ago, one of my, one of the cries to how I got really deep into this was listening to an old audio pod tech show where John was interviewing uh, Jonathan Schwartz and he made this comment about how the Sun chipset was going to be swapped out with the AMD uh, Galaxy chipset and how this was going to change the cost of Sun machines 80% or whatever. And I was the only one, I guess, who listened to that podcast. We had a Sun sales guy in the next day at my wireless company. I'm not mine, I, I worked there. And I had this competitive data that no one else at the table had ever heard that said, we should wait a few weeks on this deal because if we switch to the AMD chip instead of the Sun chip, it saves us three million bucks. Yeah. And I went, there is magic in this media making hat. When I met uh, John Furrier a little bit later, I said, how did you actually pull this off? You have a, a big, huge audio subscription. This is the way old days. Yep. And um, I said, you have this huge audio subscription where the company pays to get in front of these people. I, the consumer, eat this like with gravy and how did that work? And you know, of course, it, it's people want good content. Eleven yeah. something years, you know, into my experience of blogging, everything I've ever done really well just came down to I wrote it better. I, I made it make more sense. I mean, the same thing. Yeah. Sometimes it's you're there first, but you don't exist on scoops. I mean, it's great when you get the scoop, but you exist on that like getting in deeper story. You're one of the yeah. few guys out there. I say short form video is the only way to do it. And every time I do, you come on and you say no, it's not. Yep. And but you're right as well. Because I, your long form video is done well. I, I think if people actually play the video, they want to hear you. Right. You know, people want to hear Chris Brogan. You know, sure. they'll listen to you for hours. So See so me. why only give them two minutes? You know? <laughs> and it, you know, if they only want two minutes of you, then leave right now. See you in the, <laughs> Bye. <laughs> well, because I think that, you know, for, for every uh, large piece we read in the New Yorker, there's so many more people that, you know, read USA Today and don't admit it or whatever. True. And that's why we try to do intros now and try to keep the news up, up front. And, right. and why we do text along with, a, you know, so you can get the gist of what we're talking about in, uh, along with our longer media. But if you really care about Chris Brogan, you're going to listen to this whole show, right? Right. But I mean, um, even, that, even that process. Yeah. I mean, you you brought that to Rackspace uh, and you and, um, and you evangelize it, but that process of learning what some of the kids are calling transmedia, and I just can't, is that notion of here's the bite, here's the photo, here's the two minute video, here's the text, you know, here's the audio cutout. I mean, your your kind of repassion for audio a few weeks ago got me excited about it. I went and bought the goofy IM2 uh, task cam thing to start messing with audio again because of you. Um, 
I don't think, I mean, if, if you think no one's there on enterprise social, no one is there on, if you're going to really commit to media making, you've got to you really go all in. Yeah, and you know, I have Flipboard up here, and Flipboard uh, shows you, you know, uh, status meshes from Facebook, longer form blogs, right? L really long form stuff like uh, economist articles sure. or whatnot. Um, and, and photos from Instagram or Flickr or whatever. Um, 500 PX, right? And videos from YouTube or Vimeo, Vimeo or wherever. And, and, and more, SoundCloud audio. That's why I got excited about audio because I saw, oh, I can, I can do a pod podcast from my iPhone and in a few minutes, it's on everybody's flipboard. It's like, whoa, that is powerful, right? That's right. what we call it, what we were talking about feeding the beast, right? This right. is a beast that you need to feed. No question. <laughs> so and, how do you feed your beast? <laughs> so so on, the, on the acquiring in, I, you know, I think we have some similar processes, although I have gotten away. I used to be just Google Reader guy, and it was because I could do it in a keystroke and whatever. I've, I've started taking to things like flipboard. I enjoy it, although I thought I didn't. I really had that feeling like, you know, I really have to have more power tools, and I was mad at this visually pretty product, uh, but I like Flipboard now. Um, where I get my stories, I try my, I mean, what I write about on Chris Brogan is one thing. I, I, it's always my junk, and it's always some thing that happened or some dumb photo I took that sparked an idea. Today's was, um, are you, do you want to be Van Gogh or Warhol? Do you want to have you know, much more deeply critiqued stuff, but absolutely no fame when you're alive? Or Warhol, who was a factory, who painted pictures of soup cans and got to absorb all his fame early on. My opinion is I'd like to be Warhol. Yeah. Um, that's my stuff. But Me too. When, I'm, when I'm feeding the social web, I guess what I try to do for like my social platforms is I'll try to find the most obscure thing that they're maybe not going to go after. Um, and sometimes I'll just steal Guy Kawasaki's and retweet him because he's put out such a volume yeah. that no Well, he has five people that are curating. Exactly. So finding all sorts of cool stuff, and he's built a whole system, a whole company to bring the best stuff to him. That's you know? true. But you know what I think is, it, it works sometimes to his disadvantage because I think that we're so used to that stream that we don't watch it, and so sometimes I can pluck one of his stories and get more retweets of it. I mean, it ultimately benefits him, but you know, as you know, the, the currency of being a news bringer sometimes is just be, you know having the, the right pulse. Yep. So. Yeah. Um, what are you seeing happen in the world right now? You know, is, is the iPad changing your idea or is it, is it Android, is it iPhone? Is um, something happening in the world that's changing your idea of what you're going to do in 2013 or something like that? So iPad and, and, and smartphones in general and tablets have really changed a lot of my message because what I've been saying is we are fully bought into this idea that we want to consume. So media makers like ourselves are by far the outlier. I mean, they used to say something like 10%. I'd say we're like one, or maybe 0.1% of the people yeah. making versus consuming. Yeah. So I say, if you're not making bites, if you're not making little tiny nibbles, then you're not addressing that universe that's a tablet lean back kind of flip page person. Yeah. Um, that's one. The other is, this is empowered, especially tablets, have empowered the um, 40 to 65 year old to really dig into the product because they wanted the iPhone, they couldn't see it. They were doing the trombone yeah. thing. And they just yeah. were, the vanity issue, they just didn't want to do it. Or ease of use was fine, but they still had to do that in front of people. Tablet, you just do that a little bit, everybody can see. So I see this is pulling, you know, we see all those stories. It's helping the autistic community, it's yeah. helping the nursing home community, uh, and it's and I think that there's so much more to do with that. And, and, and it's amazing how fast enterprise is adopting this. Aetna right. or Honeywell. Honeywell's a defense contractor, a conservative company. A, like the most conservative company you can probably think of, and they're standardizing on right. iPads. You're right. You know? Yeah, and I think one of the things I think about that is no one expected it. I, I mean, I would say that uh, Michael Dell is doing a great uh, bit of work to say, no, 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 there's still plenty of need for a plain old laptop at home, and, and, and he's come up with his kind of iMac, and, and I think those products are great looking, and I think they're, I think they're gonna do well, I think Michael's doing well. Uh, Samsung coming up with the Chrome box yep. and the Chrome uh, new Chromebook, I think it shows that it's still going to have to happen. And as a creator, we don't create on this much. We create for the novelty factor. Yeah. Um, so there's still going to always be a play. But I say that, you know, we've been, we've been chasing which screen is which screen are the eyes going to land on, and it's still not that screen. But if you don't have that as part of your flow, I think there's going to be an issue. And I think. Yeah. I think you're geared towards that, and, and obviously Rackspace gets to, to, to play along, but I mean, when you're working with the clients of Rackspace, I, I see some of those people coming forward with that as well, because they're, 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 they're 
I don't know, a drafting, for lack of a better term, off of the idea, gee, we ought to do that too. Yeah. Tell me what you're seeing in curation happen, and can you become a Chris Brogan just on Pinterest, you know? I, or do you still need to do more than just uh, collecting and sharing links or sharing interesting things? You know, so there's a community of people out there. There's a, there's a subset. Storify is another one. Right? Sure. There's a subset of people, uh, you know, Calvin Lee, uh, Mayhem Studios, he got a pretty good sized write up inside of a Wired article about clout because of his uh, work to maintain his cloud score, which I found somewhat deplorable because I thought, you know, the kid's tweeting hard to get free movie tickets and that, you know, he's a smart guy. But what Calvin Lee is, is he's definitely in that curator class. He doesn't create a lot, he curates a lot. Uh, Iconic88, who's a guy named Mahai, he does a lot of that. And we know a bunch of those names of people who are pure curation humans. and. We benefit from that. Yeah. Um, I don't know that one makes a name for one, or, or more importantly, in my in my perspective, I don't know that one derives a business from that. Because who's going to hire you because you find the good stuff, uh, unless maybe you're a researcher, or yeah. unless you can actually tie that to revenue, like a trend hunter, cool hunter type of person. Yeah. And I don't think I don't think that. The I'm, kind of person who does that, I don't think is the kind of person who sees that as a business value. I'm, I'm doing a, a lot of curation, mostly because I need to watch the world so I know what's coming next. Right. What startup did I miss? You know, because I can't see it all. I, I'm one but, guy, right? I don't have a team like TechCrunch or Rewrite Web. True. Or, you well, know. You know, what I like about that is that we can, we can keep saying that. We can keep saying, Scobalizer is written by Robert Scoble. Because yeah. Brogan.com is written by me. Uh, we are contending at times, you much more so in the tech space, uh, with you know, what are now media companies all the way through. With no mic, TechCrunch is, you know, 20 wonderful people, or whatever it is. And, and I, I, I'm not maligning that, but I'm saying you can do it with just one. When people say, I don't have time to tweet, Maine Beer Works, or Maine Brewing, I don't know, these two fellows in Maine who make beer, one guy is the lawyer and the business maker and the CFO, and the other guy is the brewer and the CMO, and it's a two-guy company, and they tweet plenty. And yeah. they get business from their social net, and they're doing fine. Yeah. You can be an army of one, I think. And, and I guess one thing I'm seeing in the trend is I see few, fewer people believing that storyline yeah. and more people achieving it. Yep, no, absolutely. Tell me about your tools and uh, you know what, when, when you talk to enterprises, what, what are they hoping to learn from you? Why, why do they hire you and why do you get these speaking gigs and sure. you know, go around the world? You know, I, I'll, I'll tell you where it's going uh, and I'll tell you where I'm mostly talking about now. Where it's going is people are buying this and that from this and that consultant or this and that vendor and they're, they've bought a box of tools and they don't know what to do with them all. They've said, we've got all these things, we're just not making any money. And so they're firing the social media manager, not the director, not the VP, firing the little guy and saying, they didn't, I don't, they didn't make me any business, I don't know why we kept them. But that wasn't, it was a strategic problem. So I'm fixing that, that's where it's going. Where I am right now and what companies bring me in for is they say, you seem to be one of the only guys out there not saying, go after more likes. You seem to be one of the only guys out there saying, there's revenue in this. You're also a guy not saying, this isn't marketing, this isn't comms, this is business touch points. This is yeah. how do we touch business. And so I'm fortunate enough to keep coming and telling a, a, a variant of a story that says, wherever there's a human, there's an opportunity to do better business. Sustainable relationship-minded business needs good tools. Yeah. I'm showing them, great that you have Hootsuite or CoTweet or whatever you want to tweet with, now here's the method, here's the strategy. Yeah. Great that you bought HubSpot and now you don't know what to do with it, or Marketo or any of those guys. Now how do you actually tie that to your whatever? I think it's great to work with Benioff because I think Salesforce is one of the few CRM tools that is built to say, now do this with the data. Because yeah. the first social CRM I saw was, here's their uh, records with us, and then here's their Twitter stream in a sidebar. Yeah. Uh, big deal. Uh, you know, It's almost rare that a, a tweet goes by that gives me business, what we should be looking for in that is opportunity tweets. So it's search driven, it's listening driven, and I'm, and I'm pleased to say that companies are paying more attention to the listening tools now, yeah. because you can, do, you can go in and say one thing, how much money do you spend on speaking tools? Yeah. How much money do you spend on listening tools? The answer is always zero. And then I would say, oh, that's like buying a car without a, a windscreen or a dashboard. So yeah. let's maybe put a window in this vehicle and we can drive it better. Yeah. And so that's what I do. You know, not many people understand other things that you can do with social media. I mean, Rackspace is pretty unique in that. I, I got a really nice letter from a customer yesterday that said, I bought Rackspace ju just because you're out talking to startups and keeping the brand fresh. Uh, and I said, you got it. 
you got the ROI of what this stuff does. No question. It's it, storytelling. It's customer development. It's lead generation. It's it's also all the customer service stuff, which yeah. is, hey, I'm pissed off at you because your my server's down, or if you're wearing Hotel Roger Smith shirt, sure. right? Hey, my bed wasn't made when I got in the room, you know. Sure. And and he can, if you're listening, you can fix that and make a better experience for your customers. So, I'm a Rackspace customer because of. I know. I'm a Rackspace customer because of fanatical support. I, I tweeted once, dear Rackspace, my site appears down, and I got three phone calls, two emails, and a tweet, and the service was up in 11 minutes. That's why I'm there. And 11 minutes was only because it was my fault and they had to teach me how to fix it. Yeah. Um, but your point about going out and telling the story, you know, is a good wrapping point in, in how we feed the beast. This feeds the beast, because you get all this interview content that comes back. Yeah. The other thing is, Hardly any of the other booths are taking the same model, and the, and the model is make your buyer the hero. Yeah. You know, if you want to come in the booth to get a squeezy ball, or you want to come in the booth to get interviewed by a tech visionary. Yeah. I'm, I'm in on B. I have squeezy balls. I'm all good. <laughs> and with that, I know you have to go. Thanks. Thank so, you. Thank you so much for spending a few Appreciate minutes. It. You're a hero of mine. So keep it up. Ditto. Thank you. Yeah.